Ali Bongo was an, a child that was adopted from an orphanage by Omar Bongo, who was the president of Gabon, who have ruled for almost 40 something years or thereabout. Now he has spent almost, he's on stroke. In fact, he struggled to walk as I saw him yesterday. Now, Gabon is poorly governed, an oil producing country, less than the population of five or six million people, if I'm not mistaken. The only thing you see in Gabon is the state capital, which is Liverpool. If you go to the countryside, there's nothing to offer. No good road, no school, no light, no water. These things are bound to happen. Today is Gabon. Tomorrow might be Cameroon or Nigeria. Let's not deceive ourselves. When once you choose not to do things right, <laughs> my brother, things, somebody else who is standing by the, rise, by the roadside, whether the son of nobody, will challenge the powers that be. As a nation, as a country, nobody owns it. It's all for anybody to grab. Who has the mind, the vision, and the intellectual to grab it? He will grab it. And that's what has happened in Gabon. Omar Bongo spent almost 40 something years in Gabon. Paul Bia was celebrating 40 years or 42 years in, in France as a president. I was a kid when he came to power as a president of Cameroon. Yet he chose to go and celebrate his 40 years or 42 years in power in, Cameroon, in France. And the party was disrupted by Cameroonians who lived in diaspora. They destroyed everything, including the cake. He was chased out of the. These are the things that happened to Africans. A lot of people choose to blame the colonial powers. But I will never be blame the colonial powers because I have a mother and a father. If my father chose to give my inheritance to the slave, why should I blame the slave that I give the inheritance? That means I've not been doing something right. That means I or my father have done something wrong that make my father to give my inheritance to the slave. But now the people are waking up. I doubt if there will not be another coup before December in Africa, if not one or two. I, I don't want to mention countries where it will happen, but I know that it will happen. It started from Mali to Guinea to Senegal to Burkina Faso, Niger. Now it's Gabon. Where next? Where are we expecting the next coup to happen? What happened in Nigeria in election? Even Tunubu himself knows that all is not well. Until the rule of law, where everybody will be equal before the law, in Africa, begin to happen. It's not as if there's no corruption in the West, neither in America and Europe. But the way we do it glaringly, saying, what can you do? You cannot do anything because you are from a particular ethnic group or religion or tribe. You cannot do anything. If it continues to happen, from now to next year or two years coming, there will be no civilian government left in Africa. We have to wake up from our slumber and say enough is enough. The rule of law has to prevail. Like the Americans will say, if you can't stand the heat, don't go into the kitchen. And if you can't do the time, don't commit the crime. If you know that you can't commit, you can't do the time, don't commit the crime. If it, that's why I currently is having almost 20 years in prison, because he slept with an underage girl, which happened almost 20 years ago. But now he's having 20 or, 20, 20 or 30 years in prison. That is the law, which we don't have here. Where somebody feels that he has the money, he can wake up, take a state hostage because you have the money. Buy everybody, quest them to believe what you believe, to bow to you. <laughs> My father used to say, when your neighbor is hungry, your chicken is not safe. When once your neighbor is hungry, and you can eat without flint, your children will throw food in the dustbin, make jests of your neighbor's children, you have a sheep or a chicken running room, roaming freely. <laughs> 
My brother, if they don't steal it by the day, we'll steal it by the night. Because they have to survive. That's where we are now. We have to wake up for our somber and do things the right way. The French is not the major problem. The problem, as I always tell people, like some people will blame Britain. Oh, it was the Britain that made the North and the South with the, uh, in Nigeria. No. If the amount of money stolen from 19... I'm not talking of when the military or when the, French, then the British left Nigeria. I don't even want to go to the French. When the British left Nigeria, to 1999, when democracy fully came, when Obasanjo came for a second tenure as a civilian president, the amount of money stolen from Nigeria, taken outside of Nigeria, Dubai, France, US, British, or other places, did they consult the British, the British or the Americans, or the Dubais that we want to take money out of, out of Nigeria? No. Is it the designers? Is it the... Which, who will I mention? The Obasanjo's. They are merchants who are ministers who have all stolen money and taken it in out of Nigeria. If that money is remaining inside of Nigeria, I don't know where the Naira would have been by now. Or because you have easy access as a businessman to get loan, to get facilities, because the bank will have a sufficient fund. We will be struggling where the Naira is between almost 1,000 to 900 and something Naira to the dollar. No, we won't have that. Whether you believe it or not, we won't have that. But because money is stolen in dollars outside of Nigeria, every $1,000 stolen from Nigeria, 90% of that money is kept. Even the local government chairman in Nigeria want to buy a house in London, want to buy a house in the US, want to buy a house in Dubai. How are you expecting Nigeria to do well? This is the situation we find ourselves, and that's where we are now. If we can return all that money, I'm not talking of in the 60s when we have independence. No. I don't even want to go into that. From 1999 when Obasanjo came, up to now, the money stolen, whether by Obasanjo, whether in Yorada, whether in Jonathan's administration, whether in Buhari administration, that is taken out of Nigeria. If that money remains in Nigeria, I bet you that the dollar would not be up to 500 naira to the US dollar. The naira would not be 500 naira to the US dollar. But because this money is always taken outside, that's where that's the situation we are facing. As of Monday, as of Saturday, the dollar was around 920. I don't know what it is now. And once this happened, where half of their money that is released on a monthly basis is stolen outside. What is left of you? Tunumbu admitted that he inherited a very bad situation. The Minister of Finance, which is Bodedu, has accepted that he inherited a very bad situation. That Tunumbu even referenced that the minister should not be scared of fishing water from a dry well. If the well is dry, what are you going to fish? That means you have to dig deeper. Digging deeper means that you have to tax more Nigerians to get resources to fix Nigeria. And we are consuming notion as of as it is now, we are not producing anything. Lighter matches as the commonest things that we can produce. It, we have the capacity, the knowledge, the understanding, the technical know-how to produce. It's been exported from India or other places. And that all takes the dollar out. Where is the dollar? That is what caused Qatar Airway and Nigeria to avoid Nigeria because they can't retrieve they sell ticket on in Naira and they can't get dollar to get the the money they sell ticket out. So it's a simple but going forward, what do we do? We have created a very large cabinet. Although what I've seen he understand because he has said all members of his cabinet doesn't have anything to do in the United Nations shouldn't travel to New York. See, the immigration shouldn't grant a visa to travel to New York. If you don't, you know that you don't have anything to do in New York, they should not be granted a visa to go to New York because every minister or every special assistant traveling out of Nigeria, it costs Nigeria money. So, <laughs> I don't know where we are going from here because we are spending 90%. The president admitted that the Minister of Finance admitted that we are spending 90% of the resources we are generating to pay debt. So, we will take a genius. 
to fix Nigeria. Although we have a lot of other things to deal with. If I was to be the president, the five billion released to each state, I won't, do, I won't give each state five billion naira to provide palliatives. What would I do? I would have cleared the land, provide tractors trucks and planters to grow crops in Nigeria. Yes, we are already hungry, but you see, the hunger that food is on fire will not kill somebody. If you are expecting food that is on fire now, okay, the your mother put the food, a pot on the fire. You know that the pot is on the fire. You know that food will soon get ready. It won't kill you. Then sharing a derika of rice, a carton of indomie, for how long will it take you? When that is gone, you go to the toilet and the next day you are hungry. That's what we are doing. If each state gets five, five billion dollars out of that six states, including that we are 37, five times 37, what does that amount to? Supposing that amount of money bring tractors into Nigeria, bring machine that will clear bush to grow crops and facilitate extension workers properly. Grow rice, grow wheat, grow maize, grow sorghum, soya beans, because these are the crops that tractors can grow. You know where you take this food. Some of the rice that they grow now, three months, is already ready. Corn will take four, five months, it's already ready. We are exporting corn from South Africa to grow animal feed and other stuff. Why share 5 billion naira and 1,000 or 100 bags of rice to each state? You can give state 100 bags of rice, but the 5 billion naira, I don't want to blame the president. People are really hungry, but for me, it's not the best option. It's not the best option. If you spend that amount, that amount of money, 5 billion naira, bring the best of tractors, clear the bush, grow the crops. Yeah, people were hungry for some months. I think it will, it will take us somewhere, but this system is like cosmetic. Somebody went to do a cosmetic, a, a plastic surgery. After some months, you know what happened to Michael Jackson. It's not, it's, it's not beginning to fall off. So it, won't, it doesn't help, and it will help. The Chinese will always say, if you want to catch a, if you, if, don't give a man a fish, teach him how to fish. That's where we are now. So. I don't really know. Step on people's toes who have stolen money from Nigeria. That's another way to recover funds that is already stolen, which is outside Nigeria, and bring it back to pay some of these adept. Because what we are facing is really the foreign exchange issue. There are students, there are industrialists, there are airline aircraft owners who want to retrieve the money. They buy parts in dollars. So these are all the issues we are facing. So the government has to be bold enough to step on people's toes. Those who are stolen the crude they have never told those who are stolen the crude oil. They only say, oh, since the number of crude oil is stolen. How do you know? Nobody has been arrested. Nobody is being prosecuted. You arrest a ship, you set it on fire. Who owns the ship? You should know who owns the ship before it's been set on fire. And you should go after who owns the ship. Who is stealing the oil? It's not enough to arrest one ship in the Niger Delta and set it on fire. Who owns that ship? How long has he been stealing oil? You should go after him and his asset. I think we are joking. We are, we are, we are joking. It's not every day you come on television and say that a certain amount of oil is stolen on a daily basis or a weekly basis. And nobody has been arrested. How do you know how many quantities of oil have been stolen on a daily basis or a weekly basis? And you can't arrest them and you can't prosecute them. And you can't go after their asset or their money they have acquired. Come on. Let's wake, wake up from our slumber and stop joking. It's very possible. It can happen. If it happens in Gabon, it happens in Nigeria, it can happen in Nigeria. Let nobody see me that it could cannot happen in Nigeria. It happened in Sudan, it happened in Mali, it happened in Guinea, it happened in Burkina Faso, it happened in Niger, now Gabon. So, like the Bible said, 
He says, is there anything that the eyes have not seen, or the, the eyes have not seen, or the ears have not heard, or the mouth has not eaten? Yet it is never satisfied. And that is human being for you. So if you happen in Niger, you happen in Guinea, you happen in Mali, you happen in Senegal, now Gabon, it can happen in Nigeria. I don't know. I'm not the prophet of doom. Neither do I claim that I know. No. But what happened in Guinea or what happened in Togo, what happened in Mali, what happened in Senegal can happen. In fact, the ele last election it was an coup. The last election that happened in Nigeria. I think the coup in Niger is about uh, better than what happened because they didn't spend almost a, a hundred or twenty billion uh, naira to conduct a coup in Niger. In Niger, or the people that took over power in uh, Gabon, they didn't spend a hundred billion naira or a billion dollar to conduct a coup in Niger. But we spent almost close to a billion dollars to conduct the election in Nigeria. That went up, went up in 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 a mess. That went up in a mess. People were killed. The election result was not declared. Even up to now, we don't know who won the presidential election. They just say, oh, let it be, uh, let it go. Uh, you know, it, that's what we have been doing over the years. Until the rule of law prevail, where everybody will be equal before the law. Even if you are from the most remote or the smallest ethnic group in Nigeria, as so long as you can claim to be a Nigerian. I think we are still we are still joking. So long as you can claim and you can prove that you are a Nigerian, I don't care where you come from. What can you do? Like Martin Luther King said, he said my ch four children should be treated and should be accepted by the color of their skin and not the substance. It should be treated, it should be accepted as the content in them, but not the color of their skin. That's where we are as a nation. I don't care whether, whether you are ethnic group or your community or the language you speak. It's just 300 people. But if you can service Nigeria, I'm ready to go with you. I support you to the end. It must not only be Yoruba. It must not only be Wusa. It must not only be Afulani. It must not only be the Ibos. It must not only be the Jaws, the Shakiris, the Lages, the, the Efix, or the Bibu, or the Thieves. No. There are some ethnic groups there that I don't even know. Some of the, if you count the entire population that speaks that like, they are up to 3,000. But if the best Nigerian can come from there, that can fix Nigeria. Why do you think that Americans take people from all over the, from the world? Trump is a German man. Biden is an Irish man. Former American Secretary of State that died. Madeleine Albright is not American. She came to America after the Second World War. But they accept all of can, What can you offer? When once you get to the issue, the, the table where we sit, we are just three here now. What can you offer this office? If you can't offer anything, then you don't have anything doing here. Until we get to that point, I think. Nigeria is not getting anywhere. It's not about religion, ethnicity. I'm a Christian. You might be Muslim, she might be Buddhist. It's not my business. But what can you bring to the table that will change our entire life, our entire scenario going forward? That's what matters. Until we get to that point, I think <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we, are still, we are still joking. <laughs>